All right. Yeah. Thanks for the invitation. And today, this talk will be more like a topological flavor talk where I show how, how symplectic geometry can be useful to answer some question. All right. So let's do some basics first. So, so yeah, in this talk, I'll try to Smooth topology. <clears throat> or manifest topology with fundamental problem in full dimension topology is to understand the topological structure of full manifolds. Very celebrated result of Friedman says that in this context, Friedman says that the embedded surfaces in four manifold determine the topology. So in this context, then understanding the embeddings of surfaces, whether it's smooth category or the topological category is very useful to understand um, the topological structure of a four manifold. Um, oh, sorry, what does this say again? So just for a, sorry, which one? This bottom sentence, so. Uh, for a manifold determined. Uh -huh, go ahead. Sorry, so Friedman says essentially the second homology group determine the topology, the intersection form, but uh -huh. another way you can think of that every element of second homology is represented by surface. That's another degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And together these two things essentially say that if you understand in a nice enough way how surfaces sits inside a four manifold, you probably have a better understanding about the topology of the four manifold. So we'll understand mostly how surfaces smoothly sits inside four manifold. So this is sort of the topological side of the story. So now let's talk about the symplectic story. So, so smooth surfaces, so by surface, I mean uh, two dimensional manifold and four manifolds. So smooth surfaces in four manifold, but in symplectic four manifold, let's say. Has some particular constraints in a way. So historically, Kronheimer and Moroka first proven Kronheimer. So Peter Kronheimer and Tom Moroka proven. Uh, a version of adjunction inequality and if you are not familiar with this term that's fine i'll, I'll explain uh, which answered uh, the long standings in that conjecture, uh, 
and later this theory is being developed for other symplectic or uh, linear conjecture in CP2. So CP2 is one of the very simple symplectic four manifold, and then they define originally this person to uh, solve this uh, conjecture in CP2, but later uh, this theory uh, being developed for symplectic manifold in general. Wasn't this the Tom conjecture? It's a little different. I think it's different. The Milner conjecture yeah. is about like the minimal. Yeah, Mi Milner conjecture is about the minimal genus of torus knots or links. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Oh. Um, so that was the first kind of the first version, oh. which essentially also didn't use cyber -wit. And that time, historically, only Donaldson's invariant came. So they actually used Donaldson's invariant. And I'll let, sorry, maybe actually they use cyber -wit and I forgot the years, but it's like around that same era. Okay. So, so this conjecture, they almost got all the way. I they didn't do it entirely or something. Um, maybe. Yeah, I forgot the history. It's some combination of them and Peter yeah. Osbert and Zoltan And then the letter this theory. Uh, Uh, okay, so so these are all for, by the way, close symplectic four manifold. So let me let me emphasize the fact that this theory is for closed symplectic four manifold. So that means that symplectic four manifolds with empty boundary or no boundary and compact. Uh, so one could ask now this sort of similar theory of how surfaces sits inside now symplectic four manifold with boundary. So, so analogous questions. For symplectic four manifold. And let's talk about connected boundary. Okay. All right. So, uh, so whenever we talk about symplectic four manifold with boundary, we essentially think of two type of uh, cases. One is called symplectic filling, and the other is called symplectic gaps. So the idea is kind of this. So let's say picturically we have a manifold W with boundary Y. And let's say we have a symplectic structure. Now near the boundary, this symplectic structure kind of generate a Liouville vector field. And depending on whether this Liouville vector field pointing outward with respect to the boundary or pointing inwards with respect to the boundary, we call it, so this is symplectic filling and this is symplectic gaps. So these are the main two interesting ingredients. And also one more point I would like to mention is that the symplectic structure kind of induced a contact structure. That means a uh, two-plane field, which is nowhere integrable. So just for the completeness, let's write y sub. And in today's talk, our main object is this guy instead of this. And I'll say why actually I care about symplectic cap more than symplectic feeling. So there's never a notion of like a Louisville symplectic cap, right? Because the vector field expands the symplectic form in mm -hmm. cap. Mm -hmm. So it can't continue all the way inside the cap. That what... Yeah, that's true. Be yes, 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 that's true. So, so that's why we always talk about in a, in a small neighborhood of the boundary. This is the picture, that's, that's correct. So, so your cap is, it has to be compact, right? Yes, everything, okay, yeah, everything I'm talking about compact, that's the reason I draw this picture. So that is like, you can see that it's sort of capped off. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so then let me introduce now the main problem that I'm curious and I want to understand. What is the main question that I'm... Um, okay, so let me uh, state these questions in terms of completely smooth four manifold first. Uh, so, so I need to define a notion. So let me first define the notion. So let X be a smooth four manifold. Why? Okay. So this is this notion is uh, initially defined by Cipriano Manolescu. Uh, Manolescu, uh, Sucheri Sarkar, Marenga, and Willis. They define this notion called uh, H sliceness of a knot K on the boundary Y as follows one that this knot will bounce a disk in the interior. So K bounds. List B in the interior X. And the second criteria is that homologically, this is a trivial disk. So if you take the corresponding homology element in the relative homology H2 X comma Y, this is trivial. So in particular, if somebody is familiar with <coughs> smooth topology or in particular smooth four manifold topology we know that when x is a four ball this notion is essentially called sliceness of a knot it's essentially sliceness of sorry can i sorry. yes so so uh, a disk means embedded yes uh, a disk means smooth embedded so that's correct so more or less, I, most of the time forget to mention all this so smoothly embedded. Any more question? So okay. usually you don't see the second condition there because H2 is zero, right? Uh, yes, so that's a great point. So since uh, here, uh, there is no second homology in particular, so the second condition sort of accurately follows. Is there a notion of like deep slice, like, or like this thing? This yeah, thing? yeah, there are other notions. So deep would be like when you have- Yeah, when you have to consider the homology. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, great. So, okay. So one thing I would like to say is that again, this is part of topology, but important in this context is that given any knot in, uh, let's say, S3, and I think this is also true for actually any three manifold, if I take a knot, um, this is uh, H slice in either some connected sum of CP2, CP2 bar or some copies of S2 cross S2. So in other words, every knot sort of has this property in a smooth manifold world that it is H slice in, in some. What does the H come from? So H is homolo uh, homologous, like uh, it's like homologically trivial. So that's the reason it's H. So like, yeah. Yeah, sort of. Sorry, what is this? So this is the ball connection with? Sorry, which one? The, this is H slice in the ball connection with this? So what is this? Every part? knot is H slice in either some copies of connected sum of CP2 and CP2 bars. But minus a minus a oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I absolutely forgot. Yes. So let's say puncture. 
So this O sign means that X minus a four. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, false. So, so this notion by definition is X minus a four. So then you can think of the boundary as three sphere. So yes. So this is an interesting result that every knot is H slice in these two manifold. Okay. So these are, by the way, these are very much far from being symplectic. So now we could ask this question that what happened in symplectic four manifolds. Sorry, how do you how do you do this? Do so how do you up intersections of a no? So this is like so there is this technique of um, double band move. Where so like 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 whenever you have like two strand going over and under, you kind of move them. And so since their orientation are sort of like in a reverse way, you can add either this copy CP2, CP2 bar or S2 cross S2, and you can do this operation using those disks. But now each of the disks get canceled out by its uh, orientation reversing copy. So you are not actually creating any homology, but now after the operation, you kind of change the uh, over crossing by under crossing. And every knot is sliced by doing these operations. Changing the over crossing by under crossing. So the, the blow, you so you like you do a blow up in the curvy diagram. You do handle two handle slides. Yeah. So it's 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 not exactly blow up, but it's like a double blow up kind of like you have to add CP two CP two bar in order to do that, or H two cross H two in order to do that double move. And this ball that you uh, need to puncture might not be trivial in homology or something. No, the ball is always true. No, sorry, no. Uh, what I mean. Not sure what I mean. But okay. <laughs> All right. So, so now, as we can see that the direction we are going for, so the questions to this question. So these questions, so we motivated from the work of Ciprian Manolescu, Lisa Piccarolo, and Marco Morenga. So the main question that I'm interested in understand following that, given or not, In three sphere S three, uh, can one find symplectic uh, for manifold X uh, such that K is H slice? X or punctured X. So this is the question now I'm curious to understand is that, so in smooth world, this is possible, but can you make it happen in the symplectic world or not? So this is a uh, smooth topology question, but now inside symplectic four manifold. Um, okay, so, so now, as I said, that I sort of also emphasize the word symplectic caps. So here is what symplectic cap comes to the picture. So note that if you start with a closed symplectic four manifold X, so X is a, let's say start with a closed uh, symplectic four manifold X. Then if you puncture this four manifold, that means what? So puncturing means, Uh, deleting a four ball, but in the symplectic world, this is equivalent of deleting a Darboux ball. So this is equivalent of deleting a Darboux ball. In symplectic world. And what happened is that if you do that, so let's say this is my picture. This was initially my closed four manifold. And now uh, I delete this Darboux ball. What happened is that near the boundary, the vector field now sort of going in. So you kind of have this picture now. You kind of get this picture. That is, uh, the, the vector field is sort of going inside the four manifold. So in particular, uh, asking whether 
it's not is H slice in symplectic four manifold is equivalent of asking whether every knot is H slice in some symplectic gap or not. Okay. So this vector field may not be extended to the whole of X, right? Ah uh, no, this vector you don't need the vector field to be extended to the whole. But uh, in the definition of symplectic gap, don't you need a Liouville Liouville uh, Liouville domain? Ah uh, no, you, you just as I said, all you need is the symplectic. So I, I I didn't write it down, but the vector field locally essentially looks like this. Uh, the Lie derivative of the vector field with respect to the symplectic form is this, and then uh, the contact structure. This is contact form for psi. Okay, so just local linear boundary. Yeah. So yeah, I, I didn't explain this technique. Um, in, in the eight sliceness in the symplectic world, the disk or the knot, like those are all topological objects. They don't yes. have yes. Yes, they are topological objects. Yes, yeah, that's correct. But but now we can use some symplectic geometry here, and that is what I will say. Um, so, so this is the question that I'm interested um, By the way, just for a comment, I would like to say that uh, if you drop the H slice condition, then every knot is actually slice in some symplectic uh, gap. So every knot slice. Some symplectic gap. If you drop the H slice condition. Okay, so that's that. But let me tell you what happened instead of symplectic gap if we consider symplectic field. So instead of gap. We consider this problem. Like feeling. Then we can actually answer it. By slice. By slice means like by slice. Okay, so slice is only this condition. Just the first condition. Okay. Yes. So this. So the first condition here is only slice, and the additional hypothesis, if it is uh, homologically trivial disk, then it becomes. A it's, slice. Is that obvious? This this thing you're saying. But the slice, like, is it some which one? The, the star statement. This is oh yeah, okay. this is sort this of is like you you start with a four ball, you attach one stand two handles. Okay. So then that knot gets capped off, and then you cap off with a symplectic cap, and then you puncture that four manifold. Then this knot by uh, construction have this core of the two handle as a slice. Okay. But it is now you can see that obviously it is not homologically true. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of obvious if you know a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's some obvious instruction. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> okay. So for example. In symplectic uh, feeling, we have this very strong inequality. So in symplectic feeling, we have this strong uh, inequality, which is generalized Beneco inequality. Proven by Tom Roca and Rowling. And this is as follows that if 
um, W omega is a symplectic filling for y psi. Um, and let's say k be a Legendrian node. Uh, those who do not know what is Legendrian node, Legendrian node, so, so this is a two plane field. So legendary knot means a knot, but now at each point you also consider the tangent plane at the knot. And if that lies with the uh, contact uh, two plane field, then we call that as a legendary. So, and every knot can be made legendary by a small perturbation. So, so it, that's how like smooth and symplectic geometry plays so, because you can easily go from smooth world to symplectic world by just part of being the knots uh, nicely in a small neighborhood and that doesn't change anything about the smooth topology. Okay, so if we start now with a legendary knot K and given a legendary knot, uh, oh, also let's assume null homologous. So if that's the case, then we know that this knot bounds a surface inside W. And let's so this condition kind of says that there exists a surface sigma in W such that boundary of sigma is that knot K. Now, given a legendary knot, there is an invariant called thurston benedict number, which is sort of now, uh, uh, count the difference between the smooth framing coming from a surface versus the contact framing, okay? So, so in this setup, we can say now that, um, sorry, what's the contact framing? Because it's tangent to context framing. Uh, oh, sorry, I, by, by contact framing, I mean like you, you have this now normal direction uh, and, and you can, that will give you another framing. So now difference between that and this ciphered framing, that difference is giving you uh, the thurston benedict number. Okay. So, so you take, oh, so you take the- So the contact two plane field at each point you have the normal direction. So that gives you a framing, that push up gives you a framing of the knot and, and the ciphered surface, embedded ciphered surface since it's null homologous, uh, yes. it has a ciphered surface inside the three manifold that gives you a canonical framing. The difference between these two framing will be the number, integer number, we denote as thurston benekin number. So the thurston benekin number of this knot uh, plus, uh, sorry, let's see. So the Euler characteristic of the surface sigma plus thurston benekin number of the knot plus some something called rotation number, but it's okay if you don't know what is it since we are taking the absolute value. So this number always less than equal to zero. Okay, so now we can see that if we start with a knot such that this number is bigger than zero, that sort of force the Euler characteristic to be, uh, uh, sorry, that sort of force this Euler characteristic now to be negative, which implies that this surface sigma cannot be a disk. So this condition then kind of force that, that sigma cannot be a disk because of the Euler characteristic of structure. And this number is always positive. What is the, what is the rotation number again? Uh, so rotation number one way you can think of this chunk class in the one. Is it like you trivialize the yeah, text structure over a ciphered surface and then you just look at the winding number relative yeah, yeah, to the ciphered yeah. framing? Yeah. I think that's what it is, right? Yes. Yeah. It's a little complicated, so I tried to avoid that rotation number. Uh, okay, I think that's, I think I remember now. So, so this is the interesting fact now that's happening in symplectic feeling, sort of like it is coming for free in certain way after this inequality that, that if you have, if you start with a knot which has this framing positive, this thurston benedict number, then that knot cannot bound any disk. In particular, then that knot uh, is not a H slice because. And this is a gauge theory thing? This, uh... this is, yeah, this is sort of gauge theory thing. But this very nicely, relate uh, symplectic and contact geometry. So yeah, like, as I said, the smooth topology and symplectic and contact geometry kind of like, in a sense, goes very parallel. And this is for any Legendre representative. Exactly. So then when you say this equality, it's really for like, you pick a Legendre representative, yeah. any yeah. Legendre representative yeah, exactly. satisfy this. Yeah. Okay. okay. And 
one more thing you kind of notice here is that we really don't care about the topology of this uh, thing W as long as it's a symplectic field. But as later we'll see that topology of a cap actually uh, changes the uh, this sort of sliceness. Uh, and that's what makes the cap more mysterious than feelings. Uh, so obviously, like such a formulation doesn't uh, hold in symplectic cap. Otherwise, yeah, the problem would have been solved. So. Is there a short way to say why it doesn't hold? Oh yeah, I'll be trying to say now. Okay. Um, um, so, so yeah, but cap, symplectic cap, on the other hand, is very different from symplectic feeling. So those who have, haven't ever seen these two terms before, let me quickly give you a few interesting comparison between symplectic cap and symplectic feeling. Um, one of the most celebrated result in this direction is that, um, symplectic cap always exists for any contact three manifold Sorry. but existence of symplectic filling is very restricted uh, but And in late 90s and early 2000s, it was a big uh, problem that what are the three manifolds which has feelings. And there are certain examples and various famous paper around 98 and 2000, 2003 that there exist three manifold with no symplectic feelings. Uh, and in that direction, another interesting fact is, uh, that certain uh, three manifold actually have unique symplectic feeling in a sense. Uh, for example, a three sphere has a unique symplectic feeling Blow-ups, but symplectic cap is so weird. In particular, it could have infinite. I mean, it always have infinite limit. Not only that, you can take as large homology as possible. So, but cap can have arbitrary large homology. This sort of telling you that why such problem in CAF is difficult and interesting because like really like gauge theory do not or cannot really control the topology in an obvious way. Whereas at filling sort of you can see some interesting uh, uh, obstruction that gauge theory is giving us. Um, and now essentially my rest of the talk is uh, sort of my small contribution to now understand the topology of symplectic cap instead of symplectic filling. Um, and before I state the main result, anyone has any question? A question, yes. So it's the thing about the cap, I, I think I've asked this before, but is the thing that 
this cap thing in dimension four is not a consequence of some like general H principle. It's like something that, because I feel like when I read the like, there's yeah. this thing about making mm -hmm. cobordism symplectic. That's like the Ellie Ashford yeah. paper. Uh -huh. But then like, I remember their like dimension four is just not on the list. Of things yes, like. dimension four is complicated. I think for over twisted contact structure on the boundary, maybe you can do certain H principle, but otherwise, like H principle sort of argument kind of fails in, in 4D. But it's still true. The thing that you would want to be true, which is that, I mean, maybe not maybe not the most general thing, which is that anything that's yeah. a, uh, it's a yeah, 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 yeah. structure. Yeah. But okay, I believe, yes. I, I believe to be true. I just do not have a rigorous proof of the whole generality. So oh, wait, 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 of which thing you believe that the... the... Sorry, which thing you're saying? Okay, okay. So I'm asking, it's true that a cap always exists. Yes. But you, you're saying you believe that it's true that there is that any... Like uh, I, I don't want to completely derail this, so maybe I'll just maybe we'll just talk about this after. Okay. I'll like okay. Cool. One, two, three, four. Yes. Yeah. By the way, this this statement is even true even if you fix the boundary contact structure. You can you can make the topology as messy or as large as possible of a of a cap. So. All right, so, so this Benequity inequality also, we can put sigma to be the safer surface also, right? Yes, yes, you can put any surface. That's why I'm saying that. That's the reason I, I in fact, write in W and because a cipher surface also can be pushed inside a uh, So this gives the, a bound on the genus of the knot also. Yes, yes, it, 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 it's a stronger bound, actually. It gives you the four genus bound, which is stronger than the three, three bound. Yes. A <laughs> uh, very nice question. I think I don't really understand the difference between a cap and a filling. Like, can't you just swap the direction? Yeah. So that's a good cap? question. Yeah. Unfortunately, that doesn't work because this 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 results sort of stopping because three sphere is an example. Three sphere has a unique feeling, but it could it has infinitely many caps. So if you really swap, you, you cannot get it anywhere. It's a matter of orientation, so the yes. points inwards, or is the filling points outwards? Yes. So, okay, so you have the uh, yeah. like vector, a specific vector field. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So, so like no, yes, no. So th th these things sort of comes for with. So that I said, the, the the symplectic form kind of gives you this vector field through this equation. And then you can construct the contact form by just taking this equation. Yeah, but, but I always try to explain this picture to people because it's easy to like remember this picture instead of this equation. For me, I, I mean, I cannot remember equations. So I have to every time look at my old papers to, to check them. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, which board? Oh, sorry. All right, so now I'll state the main result that I want to talk today. So now I want to give a similar, not exactly similar, but some inequality which could relate the surface and uh, the genus of the surface and the thruston Benicke number of the knot for simplectic cap. So I'll state the most easiest version. But one can generalize this, uh, like in my in our paper, we wrote more generalized version. But I do not want to write an unnecessarily complicated statement at this point. So this is the main theorem. The myself. So let's say K be a knot. So now I'm only considering standard uh, three sphere. So three sphere has this unique tight contact structure that I'm considering. In case you don't know what is that, that's fine. Just re remember that it has a unique structure which is coming from uh, this feeling, this unique feeling induced that unique structure. So let's say we start with a knot, which is in this three manifold. We do not need to take it as a legendary knot because as I see, you can always part of it to make it legendary. Um, so given a knot, as I say, we have this difference between two framing and Thurston-Benicke number, but this number actually has an upper bound, which is finite. 
Um, and that is what we know, need, actually. So we have a knot, and we usually denote the upper bound of the Thurston Benekin as capital T, capital B. So the only condition we need is that this number is positive. So if that's the case, uh, then uh, let's x omega be a simplectic cap of S3 size standard. Um, so now I need a small condition. So, so I can actually do it for simply connected. Um, so, but I just assume B1 equal to zero in this case, that means first homology vanishes, which is uh, in case of simply connected, this comes for free. And in four manifold topology, mostly we care about simply, uh, sorry, simply connected four manifolds. But let's assume B1Z equal to zero. Uh, what happened is that when B1 equal to zero, the almost uh, complex structure, so this symplectic structure induces an almost complex structure on the four manifold. And for symplectic four manifold, uh, when B1 is zero, the almost complex structure criteria says that the B2 plus, uh, so this is sort of the positive definite uh, part of the uh, homology, which is coming from intersection form. Um, so this number is either three or one mod four, which is coming from uh, the fact that it has almost complex structure, but we, we can only answer for B2 plus equal to three case. So when B1 is zero and B2 plus congruence to three mod four, then K doesn't bound. So, so that's sort of the heartbroken part is that I could not able to uh, show the another remaining case, which is sort of B2 plus congruence to one mode four, um, which I believe should hold with some certain condition and I'll shortly say what. But also one thing notice that uh, for uh, this inequality, this Benequin type inequality, the 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 Euler characteristic of the surface sort of like really doesn't depend on the topology. This obstruction is independent of the topology of W. Whereas here, this is not that strict. So in particular, I'll give you an example in in later case, which is uh, not which is H slice in a symplectic four manifold, but also fall into this category. And, and that is, uh, so I'll make that remark in the very end, but uh, but yeah, let's focus on the proof of this, uh, this result at this point. So anyone has any question about uh, the statement? Yes. So this is like a, so it's it's not a thurston benekin apologist it's the consequence of the Thurston. You get the consequence of the Thurston. So I, I, I could actually write such an inequality, like, but, but as I said, it's, it's it's a little bit complicated. I see, but there is such a version. Yes, but as I said, we cannot write a great general result like that. It always depends on the topology. And that's why I'm saying that the caps are so mysterious because, okay, why don't I just give the example at this point? There is an example, actually. Uh, so, so, so if you are familiar with a little bit of contact geometry, then there is this famous knot, which is we call right-handed trefoil, and I always forget. Okay. So this knot in S3, this is right-handed trefoil. Uh, this has Thurston Benekin number equal to plus one. Okay. So our result says that that this knot is not a slice in any symplectic four manifold with B2 plus congruence to three. But now there is a famous symplectic four manifold with B2 plus equal to one, which is E1. So E1 is a symplectic four manifold. So it's actually false. 
Yes. So, oh, well, okay. Symplectic four manifold with B2 plus equal to one. And this knot is actually H slice. You want. And that's, as I said, that is sort of the mysterious part that this kind of, although we have inequality, that also very much depend on on, on, on such such so this is not just an artifact of the method. It's it's a yeah. It's actually a thing that it breaks yeah. down. That's yes. Great. Yes. Yes. But 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 this but this B plus two thing equals three is also something that you use for the yeah. So for so the, in, for the power for Ruta. Yes. Yes. So in the proof, you'll see that that I need also this fact actually in my proof. I need this fact in my proof actually. Um, one is where you blow up a cusp fiber. Yes. Oh, yes. So, so this thing bounds a cusp fiber. Yes. 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 And then you kind of like play with that. So you get some formula like that under the assumption of that B two plus, plus congruence to three. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I I haven't written on the explicit statement, but yeah, we we can get. But as I said, it's not like this general anyway. Um. All right. So and, talk, oh, sorry. You talked about some bound of the Thurston directing number for any not is it upper or lower bound? Like uh, oh, the, that capital T B is upper bound. I, I mean capital T B or small T B or same, right? No, so small T B you can take you can now vary the legendarian type of a knot and capital T B is the maximum of that number. Oh. So the minimum is always negative infinity. You can make Thurston Benicke number as low as possible, but you cannot make it hard. Okay, great. Um, all right, so, so, okay, since I'm telling this, why don't I propose my conjecture though here? So I believe that those knots that we constructed in that example, actually not H slice in, Uh, even b2 plus congruence to one, but we need this extra condition that this is this is possibly only non-example in a sense that uh, b2 plus is strictly bigger than one. So if you if you get out of this CP2 blown up world, maybe we are good. That's that's what I believe to be true. And, and now now I'll, I'll going to present the proof and try to convince people that why I failed to prove in full generality and how to how one could approach this part. Can you repeat your conjecture again? So I'm saying that, so in what is E1? E1 is essentially CP2 blown up. And here the B2 plus is precisely one. So I'm saying that this is the only non-example in a sense that Example of a uh, knot which is Thurston Benicke number positive and H slice. So, okay. so my claim is that if, or my conjecture is that if, if B2 plus is congruent to one and strictly bigger than one, then those knots that we hold over there also not be uh, H slice in, in those symplectic form. So, okay, so the sketch. All right. So, so this is very handle part, and this is sort of uh, the technical part. So I'll not say anything technical, and but I'll assume a few facts as a black box. So one main tool is sort of so one main tool. Yes. Uh, a power folder type. Refinement of Kronheimer Morocas in uh, So this was done by my collaborator Ida. This was done by my collaborator Ida. Um, so what, what we could do using this invariant is following. So 
Which invariant are you referring to? Uh, so this is, oh, the Kronheimer. Yes. So this is sort of the, 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 the four manifold invariant with contact form. Oh, like the, the, what's it called? The contact invariant? Yes. So this is sort of the generalized contact. Yeah. That's just weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so, okay, so I'll not explain this invariant, but I'll explain some certain property of this invariant. And one, one very interesting property of this invariant is as follows. So this invariant sort of works very closely with uh, the original four manifold bar fruta invariant. So again, if you are not familiar with what is bar fruta invariant, that's also fine. I, I, I'll mention again when I need it for the proof. But one particular result is that if x is a closed four manifold with b1 is zero. So for bar fruta, we usually need the condition b1 equal to zero. Otherwise, you have to deal with more complicated cohomotopy groups. Um, and let's say wb, w omega b, a symplectic filling. Uh, of a contact manifold, let's say y psi. So then what happened is that, so let's let's call this invariant psi. So let's call this invariant psi. Then what happened is that this invariant psi of x connected some w is precisely equal to the regular bar fruit of x. Okay, and this equality holds in a non-equivariant set. So bar, sorry, no. So non-equivariant. So usually bar fruta invariant defined for non-equivariant, S1 equivariant, and P2 equivariant, but this inequality only holds up to non-equivariant inequality. And that's the obstructs, that's the drawback why we could not get anything other than B2 plus complement to three. Um, this is so this is because. This is how the symplectic computation comes is that when uh, x is symplectic and b2 plus congruent to 3 point 4, then non equivalent bar fruta of x is not equivalent. So this is where uh, b2 plus congruence to 3 comes to the picture. Whereas for b2 plus congruence to 1, you have to take a S1 equivariant bar fruta. Yeah. And, and this, this invariant is a non-equivariant invariant. So you cannot really do an S1 equivariant uh, part of this. So there is a S1 equivariant invariant available, which is defined by Ciprian Monolescu in his, I guess, undergrad thesis or something like that. Is, but but the drawback of that invariant is following that the computation is extremely hard. For example, uh, you, you like we thought for a while how to define a connected sum formula for Ciprian Monolescu's invariant, and we could not able to write down. Uh, uh, but but here the connected sum formula is much easier, no matter what. Uh, symplectic filling you take. Oh, you need a sm small certain condition here, which I'm kind of hiding. Um, but there, for that, you can easily say that this connected sum formula is exactly work as the closed four manifold case. Okay. So with that, now we are ready to uh, prove this fact. So, so now essentially, Okay, essentially now I will draw a picture and try to convince you that this is the right picture. So once you understand this all, then the rest of the proof is just a picture. So let's try to understand the picture then. Um, so, so we want to now prove that if K is a knot with positive thurston Benikin number, and if X is a symplectic cap, then uh, with B2 plus congress to three, then it cannot have a H slice D. So, so let's let's do by contradiction. Assume that yes, it does have. So, so assume so proof by contradiction. So 
So let's assume that that k is an odd in S3 with custom Banneke number of k is positive. Uh, and let's say k is boundary of a disk uh, with uh, homologically this is trivial in H2. So this is our setup. Um, so what we could do is that so x is symplectic and so x punctured x is symplectic cap and b2 plus. Since we are just deleting a four ball, b2 plus is still the same as the original manifold three mod four. So, all right, so, so there's, so this is the part one of the picture. Big question, yes. X, X already had boundary S3, right? Yes. You're deleting another ball? No, 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 sorry. Okay. No, so let's, let's say this is our setup. Okay. I'll, I'll attach another ball at, at some point. Uh, so to make so it a close. starting with x0, x0 yes. has boundary s. So yes, okay. so this is what we start with. So this is my x0 with boundary s3. Now notice that if I, if I draw a picture in that way, the induced orientation on the boundary got reversed. So if I assume at the first place that k bounds a disk, if I draw in this way, and let's say this is the disk D, then in this way, the induced orientation got reversed. So this is now actually K bar on the boundary. Okay. So this is the picture now we got that this, this is a disk in, in the cap whose boundary is K bar. Okay. So now I first want to make a closed symplectic four manifold. So what I do, I just attach a Darbo ball. So a copy of four ball I just attach. Okay. So B4. And that makes it a closed four manifold. Closed symplectic four manifold. Uh, and with B2 plus converged to three. Because adding a four ball doesn't change the homology. Um, okay, so that's one thing. Now what I can do, I can start with another copy of four ball. Okay. And now I'll use this condition that uh, Thurston Benicke number is positive. So what does that do is that uh, I can attach a two handle, which is also known as Weinstein two handle because of that condition, such that I can get a four manifold W, which is in fact a symplectic fillet. So now we are kind of in this situation. We have a closed manifold, which is symplectic four manifold, and we have a W, which is uh, a symplectic filling. So what we can do, we can connect them together, take a connected sum, okay. So, so I'm trying to now convince you the picture is that connected sum is a way, way defined operation. So it doesn't matter where you connected sum. So, so, so it's, where did you get W from? So W I just construct. So I, I construct W by taking a four ball and attach a Weinstein handle. Okay. okay. So since, okay, so I, I for, means, forgot to mention in certain thing. So I attach this Weinstein handle such that the smooth framing is actually C. Since Thurston Benicke number is strictly bigger than zero, I can always attach a Weinstein handle whose smooth framing is precisely zero. And that's important now. So, so this is a zero frame two handle here, okay. So now, uh, and this is a symplectic, uh, sorry, filling, and this is a symplectic four manifold. So what I do now, I just connect them together. So that means like tubing, okay. All right, so this is now the picture I have, okay. But notice what is this? So now this, so notice that there is also a four ball here, 
plus this disk and this disk has self intersection number zero right because it's homologically trivial so that means a neighborhood of this disk is nothing but a similar looking guy with attaching sphere just the reverse orientation so in other words so so this is also in standard four dimension topology we call trace of a knot x naught of k that means you start with the four wall and you attach a two handle along a knot k with framing zero that's what w we, we did and this this part here i cannot see uh oh, sorry trace of a knot but the reverse of it is any better so in other word in w connected some x i could see so Maybe I just use this. You're running a little over time, by the way. So. Okay, let's finish in. Give me two minutes. Oh, yeah, we're good. So, so in, um, so in W connected some X, I could see this guy sitting X zero K connected some X zero K bar. So now what we can do is that, uh, so this is a four ball. But there is a two handle attached along a knot K, and there is a two handle again zero frame two handle attached along a knot K bar. Okay, so if I now do a handle slide, if I do a handle slide, then the new attaching sphere would be K connected some K bar. And moreover, the interesting fact about this knot is that this is slice, so in other words this has an embedded disk inside the four ball and i have the core here so i get a sphere now let's say s and this sphere is homologically non-trivial because this sphere is coming this sphere is homologous to this core essentially here so this sphere is uh, as a homology this is non-trivial and another result will prove that that if um, let's use Simba. If M is a four manifold boundary uh, and um, S is a sphere with sorry, non trivial sphere, non trivial sphere with a uh, self intersection number zero, then this invariant psi on M absolutely vanishes. And that's the contradiction. So in, in, inside this four manifold W connected some X, we constructed a sphere now with self intersection zero and homologically non-trivial. But by assumption, this is just connected some of a symplectic mode four manifold with a symplectic filling. So here we saw that uh, by this, uh, sorry, by that yellow result, the bar for the sorry, the, the side, this invariant is non trivial, but here we see that this invariant is trivial, and that's contrary to the fact that we assume that uh, there is such a disk. So, this is the contradiction. Uh, thank you. Sorry for that. It's okay. We asked a lot of questions. So I have some questions, but I don't want to do people. Maybe, maybe I'll save for other people first. No. So the is is so maybe I just missed this. So the B two plus equals three is only used in that non vanishing Yes. Interval. Yeah. Exactly. Here is so ensure that this invariant is non trivial so in the non equivariant set. So, do you think you can do your conjecture by establishing non vanishing this? So, in equivariant setup, we try to do that, but the connected sum kind of always we guess vanish. Like this bar for root type invariant, if you take S1 equivariant setup, this connected sum kind of fans. Also, the analog of what you were saying was just false. Right? Yeah. Like the analog of this theorem in B plus. That's what you were saying earlier. No, that's exactly at B plus equal to one. So that's the another mysterious. Oh, at, at B plus one. Yeah. Oh, but, so, so, but you're saying for B plus greater than one. Yes. Oh, okay. So if you, if you break it into B plus bigger than one, B plus equal to one, 
So, so yeah, so, so there are two categories. I think this is the interesting part of a symplectic four manifold is that B plus equal to one and B plus bigger than one. And then there are two cases. One is congruence to one mod four and congruence to three mod four. And the case on the other side? Yes, B plus strictly bigger than one. I thought for B plus strictly greater than one, your result holds. For this oh, case. Yeah, for the mod three. Yeah, okay. three. So, 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 I, so, yeah, so our result holds here. And I also showed that here this result doesn't hold. So the missing piece is this. Where there it still holds. That's, I, I see, that was the confusing part. I thought you were saying that we kind of didn't believe it for that case either, but yeah. Okay. So this is the this is the remaining part now, but yeah, but but I kind of suspect that our technique cannot give the answer because our technique is this sort of this disconnected some formula somehow disappear in 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 this category. So yeah, so maybe some other approach could help, but maybe this is not the best approach. Um, maybe since we've gone so far over, we could just like. Thank you. Thank you again, and then we'll uh, talk about it later. Yeah.